So how would this work for an actual algorithm? Let's consider how we'd use eligibility traces to implement SARSA, but with more than a single TD calculation, and so we'd call it SARSA lambda. We can use eligibility traces to keep track of how recently we've visited different states. But um, in order for that to work, if we think of um, what we've talked about here, we have a value function, a delta v, where we're computing it based on individual states. So if I just jump ahead one, you can do kind of the fundamental algorithm. Um, oh, that's interesting, the slides are reordered. Um, a fundamental algorithm with TD lambda just using V, um, as we've described, where you'd um, use the V function um, to represent your current estimate for uh, the value of being in a state. We initialize that to zero. We initialize all the eligibility traces to zero. Um, or you initialize the values randomly. Um, and then you'd have um, multiple runs. So for every episode, you initialize which state you're starting in, whether you start randomly or in the same state. And then for every step of that episode, so starting at some time step, initial state S um, at state zero, and then you're gonna go to state one. So you do this each episode. For each step of that, you're gonna choose an action according to some policy, which is just very generally defined. So however your policy is defined, um, take that action, observe the reward, and take the next state, just like we, we always did, right? So you have your state, you have your action, you have your reward, and you have your next state. Um, and then we get into using these new definitions. So instead of having um, delta v directly, we compute delta, small delta, which is that reward, plus um, the gamma and the differences of the, the value function for the current state and the next state. And that gives us our, um, our backup that we're going to be computing. And then we got to decide how to weight it based on um, which state is being updated right now. And so the eligibility trace has just the simplest possible definition that the eligibility trace with this state s gets increased, right? Um, and then we update the value function for the current state being itself plus the learning rate times this backup value weighted by um, the recency of visiting the state. Now this isn't meaningless, right? Because it could be that ES at this point um, may not be um, may not be zero at this point, right? It could be actually be some higher number, and so adding one makes it even higher. So you're basically contributing to how recently um, the state is there and relative to all the others. Now note here for this algorithm, we're essentially doing value iteration with a a TD lambda kind of update. Um, you'd have to go through all the states and update them based on um, their value and whether anything's changing. Although note if any of these are um, if any of these are zero um, or very low, um, you might be able to skip it. Right. Um, then you could skip this loop. At least that iteration. But this is just kind of in general. So for SARSA we'll have a little say this more concretely. Um, but that's the general idea. You'd be updating your value. And then, importantly, um, you're going to downweight um, or decay uh, all the other values, right? So you can take all the value every for every state. You're going to weight it down by gamma and lambda so that it gets smaller, right? So even though you added one here, it's going to get weighted down by by that. Um, right away, and as will all the other states. Um, right, so that's the general idea of using TD Lambda. Now for SARSA particularly, because um, you have to have a, a particular instance of how you're going to get that policy out and how you're representing the value function, um, this will be kind of more efficient. Something we have to have here to modify 
um, which is on the previous slide, is that we need to have an eligibility trace that is actually over state and actions, right? Um, right, so this is for Q. Um, for that domain, right? So we want to actually keep track of the eligibility trace, the count of how recently we've been in a state and action pair. There's no reason you can't do that as well. And so every time we're in a particular state action pair, so the robot's in this part of the room and is trying to go east, when we're in that situation, then we, we add one to it. And if any of those are different, then we don't. Um, and it will get weighted down in the algorithm. Um, so the, um, the backup, the, um, the backup that we're going to have is still going to be this um, this delta t, which is your reward, and now it's going to be the q function, where the difference is between the current one and the next one. And then the update is the same as in the normal sarsa, it's the next time step for the value function based on the previous one, but instead of having all those other components, um, you have this, right? So if we go back to our original um, different way of thinking of Sarsa, um, we have uh, QSA, right, plus the reward, um, plus the learning rate. And remember, if we just kind of just simplify this down to some of the terminology we had at the beginning, it's minus the target times the target minus the prediction, right? All of our algorithms are going that way. Um, and essentially, that's what delta is, right? Yeah, this R would be inside here, inside the target, right? So so delta T is exactly, is essentially um, the target minus the, the prediction, right? Um, and so that's why we're taking that part out. Um, right, so I have a thing here. Oh no, okay. Um, we're just removing that. That's why we're using delta essentially to uh, to represent this part um, of that 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 temporal difference, and but the learning rate is still outside here, and the eligibility trace weights um, whether it should apply to the state or not. So if we go into the source of algorithm, all those parts just become lines in the code. We initialize our um, our value functions and our eligibility traces. These can right the value function be initialize randomly or in a way that affect, helps you with your particular domain, but the eligibility trace really should be initialized to zero or something that means it hasn't been visited in a long time. Um, right, and so the same proceeds the same. Now we're gonna be choosing, um, we're gonna be in a state, we're gonna pick an action, we'll reserve, uh, observe a reward, we um, observe what the next state is, and then we have to choose um, this next action a prime uh, in order for us to proceed um, forward and again this policy could be done as a greedy or um, epsilon greedy or a, a softmax or anything you want right so it could be um, some way of getting a policy out of Q and you use that to get this but you're consistently following that and you're going to use the action that um, you get here the a prime in your actual update and that will become your action a in the next step right which is how you know that it's um, on policy right because the action that you're sampling from your policy is the one you're going to use and later on that means this a becomes this one right um, that's the difference from q learning so here we just have that same update we're just updating the uh the current state and action that we're in, we add a, 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 a bump to the function that's counting the frequency, the recency, and then we do the same down weighting, right? So um, we, uh, I like decay better actually, the way I was saying that. Um, we decay or reduce the accounts uh, for all of the states. Now, an interesting thing here is you could say, well, this is, seems very expensive to do for all um, states and actions. Um, things you can do to make this more efficient. Um, and you, can, you guys can do this in your um, assignment as well. 
Um, I think we'll have it later in the slide, but you can imagine having special. So the simplest thing you could do is say, um, you're gonna do this for all S and A, but only for the S and A that are in E, right? So if E is a hash table, um, that basically lets you look up um, any count for uh, for any state in action, right? So we give it basically an SA pair um, and um, some value, um, right? And then you can basically say, is this thing, um, you know, if if the pair is in it, only then do you do you do this, right? Um, and if it's not in it, then you skip it, right? So you can have some efficiency there by saying only, you know, do this update and down waiting um, for states where we have an eligibility trace. If it's zero, then it's zero, and this whole thing's the same, and it just becomes Q equals Q, and there's nothing to do. And so you skip it. So that helps. What else could you do? Right? If you think about it, um, yeah, think about it here. Let's look at this, and then you can think about it as another thing you could do. Um, so what we're showing here is a particular example of the grid world. It's kind of similar stuff we've been looking at. Um, your state domain is the states you're in in terms of these cells. And um, this is your start position and this is your um, goal position. And this is the path that you actually took, right? So it doesn't matter how you got here, what your choices were, but this is the path you took. If these were the actions you took and where you were, what would you learn, right? So doing um, one-step SARSA, original um, TD0 method, um, doing SARSA, after this entire path, what would you only learn essentially that you got some reward here and then you update it to this state, um, like T minus one, right? You got a reward at time T. Um, you know that this state's good and that's all, but you don't know about this state and this state and this state, these are all good, right? Essentially by doing um, SARSA lambda, with uh, a weight of lambda being um, 0.9 in this case. So in this case, the, um, the very most recent action gets its, its full value or almost full value, 90% um, of it. And then each one after that gets decremented by, by lambda again each time. So you only get 90% less of it, um, as well as all the other discounting. But basically you're gonna be saying this is good, but it gets decremented um, down so it's it's worth less. You're distributing that reward um, further back along the path. So what's another way that you could make this more efficient rather than computing all of these? Because imagine the path is very long and this is thousands of steps. Does it make any sense updating these ones at the beginning, right? Not necessarily, right? So you could set a threshold here um, of some threshold value. Um, I don't know what you call the threshold, data maybe. And so you can imagine then in your loop here, um, where did I have more efficient? As you have as a hash table where you only do the necessary ones, but you also could say that maybe um, only do the update if uh, ESA is you know greater than some value theta, um, and and theta could be you know 0.5 or something like that. Um, and so once the value falls below some number. 0.1 or 0.001, then they just get thrown away, right? So all the values that are small, you wouldn't go back so much. So be like this, you know, that snake game where the tail of the snake is kind of five cells behind you. You can control how far it is, but it gets weaker as you go. Um, but since you're not just saying literally five cells, you're saying this percentage, it's kind of adaptive to the space. Um, so that can speed up learning and basically that threshold will be adjustable and your algorithm will get faster and faster. And obviously if your threshold is so abrupt, that it stops you after the first step, then you'd be back in original SARSA. Um, so that's another parameter you could use. Um, but that's essentially what Lambda is doing on its own. It's just that in terms of comp computational efficiency, you might even just want to stop bothering to update these. Um, although you will lose some of the kind of mathematical completeness there because you're literally throwing away reward then at that point.